The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. A warm welcome to Christ Church. On this sad day in the life of our nation, it is right that we gather in prayer. And it is good to be gathered in this place with all of you and to be gathered with those who join us on the radio and via the live stream. As we give thanks for the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and for her years as our Sovereign, we also mourn her death. So in this service, let us offer our thanksgiving for her example of duty and commitment, her leadership and wisdom, and her faithfulness and loyalty to God. Let us pray for our nation, for our King and our Prime Minister. And let us offer also to God all that we are feeling, all those for whom we mourn, and all those enfolded in our love, confident in God's loving goodness and mercy. service continues at the top of page four in your service booklets with Psalm 23 and throughout the service you are very warmly invited to stay seated if at any point you would rather do that.
Book of Wisdom, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and are going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering he accepted them. In the time of their visitation they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. Here ends the first reading. The book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, 
beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Here ends the second reading. Please join the choir and clergy in facing east to declare together the faith of the Church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thee, o Lord, 
and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The anthem which the choir will now sing is View Me, Lord, by Richard Lloyd. Straight after the anthem, the Archdeacon of Oxford will give a short address. Lord Jesus, good shepherd of our souls, in your goodness we lack nothing. Give peace to our hearts and inspiration to our lives. For your sake, amen. We have come together this evening, whether on radio or via the live stream or within this house of Christ, with a profound sense of shock and sadness at the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Our thoughts and prayers join with those of the County of Oxford and of the broader diocese, the countries of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, and with our sorrow and condolences being shared across the wider world. It is good to thank God for the Queen's inspirational life of service 
as she fulfilled with remarkable dedication the cause to which she so famously committed herself on her 21st birthday. We also commend her confidently to the eternal love of God, the creator, saviour and sustainer of all. And we offer our prayers for the royal family, especially for Charles, our sovereign. Our hearts go out to them in their private distress, that they may know the comfort of the Good Shepherd, the one who leads us beside still waters, who restores our soul, and in whom Queen Elizabeth so publicly placed her trust. Despite its inevitability, her death is a seismic shock, for the Queen exercised her unique role as an anchor for the identity and unity of the United Kingdom and Commonwealth. As sovereign, she embodied the continuity of all that we hold good within society. As a figurehead, she was unimpeachable, personifying constancy in the midst of turbulence. As a disciple of Christ, she was a living symbol of the permanency of spiritual values in the face of material change. Our loss is not only national, but personal for she had an ability to sympathise with and affirm people of every background and belief. This was undoubtedly naturally inherited in her humanity, resilience and humour, experienced by so many, myself included. But also it stemmed in large part from her openly espoused Christian faith. It's remarkable to think that she was married for over 70 years and served as sovereign for that time to the late His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. Together, they experienced and shared the joys yet also the sorrows that are the experience of many families. And to manage this with such dignity and compassion in the glare of the public gaze was truly a work of grace. There will be countless commentaries on the Queen's life and legacy in the days leading to her funeral and well beyond. Books of condolence are already opened here in the cathedral at Reading, Minster and Civic Centres across the Diocese of Oxford. And an online book of condolence is available on the diocesan website. Flowers will be laid, candles lit, and tears shed. We might find it difficult to know what to do or to say, even how to feel at times like this, for most of us have not known a time quite like this, certainly since the death of the Queen's beloved father, King George VI. The magnitude of our loss will take time to absorb and to express, even as we pray for Charles, seamlessly taking up the orb and scepter of anointed and servant leadership. This period may well provoke feelings of uncertainty whilst drawing out questions about our corporate identity and purpose. May I suggest that Queen Elizabeth would gently, yet quite clearly, challenge us, as she often did in her Christmas broadcasts, amongst other things, to carry on, working practically together to establish the goodness and mercy of God in our communities. And as we resolve to do that, may we, with her, rest secure in the promises of God, even though I walk 
through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Father in heaven, we give thanks for thy servant Queen Elizabeth, and we praise thee in the remembrance of her long life. We offer unto thee our gratitude for all she brought to our commonwealth and nation, and for all whose lives she touched. Comfort us in our mourning, and give to us grace, so to follow her good example that we may come with her to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who died and rose again and opened the gate of glory, to him be praise, now and for ever. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. 
Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lord, the King, and so replenish him with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that he may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue him plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant him in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen him that he may vanquish and overcome all his enemies. And finally, after this life, attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless all the royal family at this time of grief and sadness. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit. Enrich them with thy heavenly grace. Prosper them with all happiness. And bring them to thine everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most gracious God, from whom all good counsels do come, we beseech thee to endue the High Court of Parliament and all the ministers of the Crown with grace, wisdom and understanding, to bless and keep all in authority, giving them grace to execute justice and to maintain truth, to bless and keep all thy people, and to give to all nations unity, peace and concord, that peace and happiness truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, and most especially all those who at this time are in the darkness of grief and sorrow. Grant this and all our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We remain in the stillness of this holy place, trusting in God's love and offering to him our own prayers of mourning and of thanksgiving for all those we love and all those in need. Finally, we gather all these our prayers and the private petitions of our own hearts in praying together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all peoples, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and with all who mourn this day and always.